the cafe ank a good looking crowbar it looked like it had a good heft too I figured the golem wouldn't notice that the crowbar had gone missing. Not that I'm saying it didn't need it, just that I'd figured I'd get away with stealing it. The cart was being loaded with barrels of wine. Apart from the wine, I can't say I was interested. I decided not to try stealing the wine barrels. I guess I never really noticed that the cafe Ankh had a wine cellar before. Perhaps if they'd run out of drinks at the bar, I'd have been more inclined to investigate. I knew full well that I wouldn't be able to get down there without permission and the right key. You can't recall if the whiskey knocked you flat Or if everything was a blur when you met her All that you remember are the tunes of a vampire A melancholy tune about impending Fetch your tank card, fill it to the brim. A cask of stale, broken drum ale. Wondering how long till you meet it again on the bank of the egg. Too much to drink, you could barely even think. Too much. I thought I told you never to play that song again. Oh, sorry, Mr. Luton. It's just I wasn't expecting you to call by tonight, and... You weren't expecting me? It's only been eight years, Samael. I guess my memory ain't what it used to be. I don't know why Samael put up with my temper. He could have broken every bone in my body if he'd wanted to. But that's what made him special, I guess that he'd take almost any kind of abuse from the clientele and he'd still be there at the piano, playing better than anyone else in Ankh Morpork. The pianist, Samael, was one of Café Ankh's greatest assets. Not only was he a first-rate musician, but there was something about him that made you think it'd be a bad idea to start any trouble. I decided not to disturb Samael while he was working. My old friend Nobby from The Watch. I hadn't spoken to him in ages. Hello, Nobby. Eh, uh, hello, Luton. Um, how you been keeping? I've been worse. Of course, I've been better, too. And I've been a hell of a lot better and not much worse. That's good, isn't it? Don't worry. If Commander Vimes sees us together, I'll tell him I made you talk to me. <sighs> it's not that I don't like you, Luton. I mean, we was friends and all. But it's just... well... It's just he'd bite your head off if he saw you talking to me. He'd go spare. How you been keeping, Nobby? How's the rest of the watch? Not so bad, Luton. Been keeping myself busy. Been working with Sergeant Colon. How is old fatty Colon? Still fat. I'll tell him I saw you. No, you won't. Okay, so maybe I won't. I was just being trite. Polite. Uh, yeah, that's the one. I guess I never really understood why it was that you didn't get kicked out as well, Nobby. Me? 
I ain't never done nothing wrong. Don't give me that, Nobby. When you were serving as quartermaster under the Duke of Pseudopolis, it was widely known that several items from the stores were found in your kit. That was all above board. I had all the paperwork for him. Your kit at the time consisted of two warehouses. I just think Vimes had a grudge against me. Luton, I know you're my friend and all, but uh, you took a bribe. Are you trying to tell me you never took a bribe? Never. The ham from Harga's House of Ribs? Evidence. The pocket clock from the suicide in the shades? I wanted something to remember him by. The money in the petty cash box? Mislaid by someone. Misappropriated by you. I never misanthropated anything. I just want to understand why it was that you could get away with all your petty theft and I couldn't get away with one act of weakness. Well, um, you see, um... Just say it, Nobby. I'm not going to hold it against you. Well, I reckon Mr. Vimes thinks that a bit of petty theft ain't something to get excited about. I ain't admitting anything, Mark you. Nothing's ever been proved. Got compared to some of the stuff that goes on in this city. But someone who's taken a bribe, well, that's like allowing the rich to avoid justice. That wasn't why I did it. I know. But you know Vimes. Yeah, I know Vimes all right. What's Vimes up to these days? He got married. Married? He was only ever married to his job. Nah, straight up. He married into the nobility. Old stone face in the nobility. <sighs> That'd drive him crazy. Well, he's sought nobility himself now. What? They made him commander of the watch. And we got a great new premises down on Pseudopolis Yard. They're full of patents and vases and all sorts. Full? Well, maybe not as full as when we moved in, but pretty full. I'll have to call round sometime. Yeah, that'd be good. We got a lot more members in the watch these days. And... We got a new dartboard. Life in the fast lane, huh? Do you seriously think it's a good idea for me to call around? I mean, Vimes isn't gonna like it. Whatever you may think about him, he's loyal to his job. I can't say he'll welcome you with open arms, but he won't stop you. Has there been a dwarf around asking questions? Can't this wait till I get back to the yard? I'm off duty. Do you know anything about some... That's not much to go on. You're a corporal in the watch. You're supposed to have a keen, insightful mind. They brought that regulation in after I joined. What do you know about a woman named Carlotta? I'm not getting drawn into anything while I'm off duty. Wait till I'm back at the yard. Have you heard of the Milka? It arrived in town a short time ago. How long ago? Three days. That's strange. Why? Well, there's been a string of odd murders in the last three days. What do you mean, odd? I mean, this is Ankh-Morpork we're talking about. I'm not sure I should discuss the details with a pavilion. A civilian, Nobby. How much have you had to drink? I'm as sober as the day I was born. Ah, that's a frightening thought. <laughs> Since that was who I... Do you know anything about a man named Mundy? I'm not getting drawn in... Wait... Tempting as it was, I decided not to start attacking people with the crowbar.
Are you Captain Jenkins? That depends on who's asking. Don't play games. I'm just after a few answers. That song really put you in a bad mood, didn't it? If you're trying to get me angry, it's working. No need to get upset. You need to drink more and think less. If I drank any more than I do now, I'd never think again. That's the ticket. So, you're the captain of the Milka. Unfortunately. Unfortunately? Ordinarily, I'd be happy being a captain of a fine ship like the Milka. But after this last voyage, I'm thinking of taking up farming. Tough journey? I don't want to talk about it. What was so bad about the last voyage? I told you I don't want to talk about it. Sometimes it helps to talk about these things. Why would I want to talk about it? Alright, let's put that another way. I want to talk about it, and the sooner I finish talking to you, the sooner you can get back to drinking. By that logic, my best bet would be to just ignore you and carry on drinking. I was never much good at logic. I did home economics at school. I was hoping you'd let me have a look around on the Milka. I was hoping that I was gonna make enough money to be able to buy myself a harem of exotic dancers called Chantel. But it looks like we're both gonna be disappointed. Is there any way I can persuade you to let me on your ship? Is there any way I can persuade you to go away? Nobby had told me that there were some mysterious murders in Ankh Morpork in the last few days. Has there been a dwarf around asking questions? I wouldn't know anything about that. On your last voyage, there were three passengers, right? Monday and two others. You tell me. You seem to know more about my ship than I do. I just want to know what you can remember about them. I remember that we picked them up in Eckle Pond, and I know they had a lot of cargo. Oh, and one was a woman, and one was a man, I think. You think he was a man? There was something particularly foreign about him. I'm not sure what. Where's Ecclepon? Up near the hub. God's forsaken place. All there is to do there is drink and eat fish sandwiches with no tops on. Sounds like a long way from the Circle Sea. We got lost, all right. It's easy to mix up port and starboard when you've drunk too much port. Are they still on board? Nope. We dropped them in Aunt Moorpork. And before you ask, I have no idea what they were doing here. That's not my business. I was beginning to realize that Captain Jenkins only had two questions to ask his passengers. Where are you going? And how much money have you got? On your last voyage, there were three passengers, right? Monday and two others. You tell me. You seem to know more about my ship than I do. I just want to know what you can remember about them. I remember... What do you know about a woman named Carlotta? There's no one I know. The Milka looks like a good ship. You know nothing about ships, do you? She looks like exactly what she is. A run-down tramp schooner with no future. Any chance I could look around her anyway? All I want to do is get the cargo loaded and get out of this God's forsaken city. I don't need people snooping around on board. I understand you are carrying a man named Mundy on your ship. What's it to you? I was hoping to find him. Owes your money, does he? No, he's an old friend. Him? 
You must think I'm as drunk as I look. Aren't you? Well, okay, so maybe I am. What did you want to know? Where is he now? I've no idea. We picked him up in Sort a couple of weeks ago and we brought him here. That's about all I want to know about him. Did he say what he was coming to Ank Morpork for? I think he said he was meeting someone. Who? Uh, I can barely remember my own name, let alone something I overheard through a doorway last week. Tempting as it was, I decided not to start attacking people with the crowbar. I'll see you. On an ordinary night, I'd sit around waiting for business. But this night, business was coming to me and bringing trouble with it. Business, I didn't mind. But trouble was an unwelcome guest. And like all unwelcome guests, it was hard to ask it to leave. And by the third day, it was generally wearing your shirts and leaving its stuff in your bathroom. Hello, Mr. Luton. I've been expecting you. I should hope so. This is my office. How'd you get in? Through the door. It was only locked. I know all about doors. Good. Use this one to get out. I have a message for you, Mr. Newton. I don't take messages from strangers. Then let me introduce myself. My name is Mr. Al Kali. I don't take messages from dwarves named after cities. My name isn't important. You seem to think it was. I've come to warn you to stay clear of the Mundy case. I'll bear that in mind. Now get out. If you don't stay clear of the Mundy case, something untoward may happen to you. This is Ankh-Mor Pork. Something untoward may happen to me whether I investigate this case or not. Now either you get out or I'll throw you out. Don't say I didn't warn you, Mr. Luton. Don't say I didn't ignore you, Mr. Alcali. A dwarf named after the Clatchian city of Alcali. And a threat. This case was getting more interesting by the minute. All we needed was a troll and a member of the undead, and we could open an ethnic comedy on Broadway. 